start with our pages. So your page base is going to be six and a half by 12. You'll need four of these. You're going to score with the 12 inch at the top of the scoreboard at six and a half. Okay. You're going to do that on all four. that in totally the wrong place because it's going to be one of those mornings. I can just tell. Okay. So we've got a little six and a half. Okay, so when these go on the hinge, this is going to fold up like this, okay? In order to make this pocket have a little bit more room, we're actually going to add a gusset to one side. And I kind of had gone back and forth on just making this bigger and cutting part of it off and decided I really didn't want to go that route. So instead, you're going to need four pieces that are five and a half by one. And you're going to score these at half an inch. Now, this may be something that's going to be easier to take a four inch piece, five and a half inch tall, four inch wide piece, and put it up here and then score like half an inch, one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, and then cut them down to one inch. Um, but I had scraps, so I just did it from scraps. Okay. So we're going to set both of these to the side for a minute, okay? Um, next, we have a large belly band that's going to run across the back side of one of, of those pages. That is four and a half by seven and a half. You need four of those. You're going to score with seven and a half at the top of the scoreboard, a half an inch, turn. And half an inch again. this you're going to have two flaps that overlap that are four and a half by seven. We need eight of these because the page design is going to repeat. 
all the way through. So with the seven inches at the top, so these are four and a half by seven, seven inches at the top, you're gonna score it half an inch. We're going to go ahead and take one of these and two of these for right now. I will do the other three assembly off camera. Okay, we're going to miter. Go ahead where is it? Okay. and fold and burnish both ends on my belly band. And then both the tabs on my flaps. Okay. So these are gonna go on here, whoops, on here like so, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and glue them on. And then you're gonna to wanna to test fit this to make sure that it's not gonna be too long where it's going to bump up on this inside when you try to close it. And if it is, you're just going to take just a tiny, tiny bit off of the end of whichever one is going to close. Oh man, I need a new blade on there. Holy crap. I didn't realize it was that bad. That's a mess. Okay, let's see if that was enough or if I just need to. That was definitely not enough. Let me grab another blade. I feel like I just changed that, but I'm thinking it was my travel one that I just changed. Not my normal one. Okay. So let's trim this one more time. But before I do that, I'm actually going to... Feels like all kinds of crap down in here. Not super surprised by that, but there we go. Okay. I'm gonna try that one more time. Take just a tiny bit off the end. There we go. Much cleaner cut that time. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, now it's gonna fit just fine now. Okay. So let me grab the complete 
deleted album. So this is the Adventureland one. This one's going to be our Fantasyland. And the way this goes... Did I switch them? Wait a minute. Oh, I did switch them. Okay, so... I don't want to recut these. I think I did mean for them to go this way because this way I didn't have to have any kind of magnet or any kind of, you know, closure on this because the weight of the little brad and the matting would like hold it down. Um, and I guess I, when I changed my directions, cause there were a couple more on here that ended up being way too much. Um, it looks like I erased the wrong one. So I'm gonna go ahead and go with this. If you want them to fold up and down, you'll do these six and a half by five, as opposed to seven by four and a half, okay? Um, and really, you could do them either way. So I'm gonna grab one of my page bases, and actually, Actually, I know what I did. I think it's because when I put my four by sixes. Okay, that's it. Okay, so some of my four by sixes that are going on here for matting run this way, and a couple of them run this way. Whereas with the Adventure Line, Adventureland one, they all ran um, landscape. So actually, this will work fine on two of these and then two of them I think I am actually going to cut my other two so um, in the meantime we're going to go ahead maybe except of course I left the pen out of the glue and now it's clogged because of course it is there we go all right, so we're going to go ahead and glue this on the back of our page. So it's going to go on the hinge. So hinges here. It's going to go on the hinge like this. Okay, so on the back side, this could be your front side, just depending on how you want to assemble your album. We're going to center this up on the back. And there we go. Okay, so let me very quickly grab my trimmer. The belly band piece is fine. If you want your, I think I do have two pieces, four pieces actually. If you want them to open side to side like that, we're gonna start with a piece that is five inches. by six and a half. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do four of those because that's my, two of my cut parts go one way, two go the other. So it's entirely up to you. And I had actually, I just cut it totally wrong. Oh my gosh. Okay. Six and a half. See, this is why I pre-cut everything. Trying to cut it and talk at the same time does not end well for me. Find another piece in here. Sorry, I've got my whole scrap pile back there. Okay, so this one is already six and a half, so we just need to cut it to five. All right. So for the flaps going the other direction, we're going to put the five inch side at the top of the scoreboard and score it half an inch. myself later. I'll end up using those somewhere else. 
because my belly band piece is fine. It's the flaps themselves that are not quite right. All right, so let's do it with it going the other way as well. So again, you're just gonna miter. burnish. And again, and then this one, it's exactly the same process. The flaps are just going a different direction. Okay. So one is going to go like so. And again, you're just going to put this on, or lay this on here, kind of dry fit it, make sure it's going to close the way you want it to. And if not, you're going to have to trim just a tiny bit off that one edge. Oh, look at that. That cut just beautifully. It helps when you have a new blade. I'm actually not sure when I changed that blade, so I'm not super surprised. Okay, so there's that one. So I'm going to grab another page base. And this one is going to run side to side. sideways so I'm looking at it from the right side to center that up. All right so that's going to be the back well again you can flip the pages either direction it's entirely up to you. These are going to be the backs of my pages because I have a different thing so that just came undone because of course it did. You, there are days, and I can always tell when I get up if it's going to be one of those days. But I need to get this one done because I'm like way behind on getting it done. So, all right, so for the front of our pages, the way I'm doing them anyway, we're going to have four flaps, one for each page, that are three and one eighth by four and five eighths. You're going to have an attachment piece that is one inches by six inches. You need four of those. And then you need four pieces of six by six acetate. Okay, so I've still got the um, tissue paper on there so we can at least see them while I do this. Okay, so for our flap attachments, and again, one by six, you need four of them. With the one inch at the top, you're going to score these at half an inch. You don't want to fold and burnish these just yet. We're going to put score tape on them first to attach our acetate pieces. And again, a lot of times doing that half inch score is a little tricky on the small pieces like this. So a lot of times I will just leave this hole so in this case, six by four, and then score half inch, one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, and then cut it down to the one inch pieces after it's been scored. It is definitely an easier way to do it, but it's entirely up to you. Okay, so these little flaps, again, four of them, three and one eighth by four and five eighths. 
Let's see, I can tell on that one. Why did I not notice when it's trimming these? I don't know. Okay, four and five eighths at the top. You're gonna score these at half an inch. just a second. And I'm going to grab some score tape. And I'm going to take bumpy side up and I'm going to put score tape in the middle on one half. Okay. You're going to do that on all four. And since I've got it out, I'm going to go ahead and just do it. Even though I'm not going to assemble all four pages right now on camera. So the front, the way this, this page design is going to be the same regardless. Unless, of course, you want to change it up, in which case, go for it. Okay. So, I'm going to set three of those aside to do in a minute when I do the other pages. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to miter on just the half that does not have the score tape. Okay. So from that little score line, I'm just going to miter on one side of that only. Okay. I'm going to miter my little flap. So, okay, so here's our page assembly. Hinge is going to be over here in my case because this, this element is going on the front, this is going on the back. If you want to flip them around, if you want to have two of them with the um, acetate element facing towards each other, that's fine. You just need to decide which way you're going to do that um, before we get to the next step with these, okay? So I'm doing mine this way. So I'm going to fold the tab on my little three by four, or three and one eighth by four and five eighths, which will be three and one eighth by four and one eighth for a three by four cut apart. And I'm just going to center this at the bottom of the page. Okay. So here's our pocket. Here's our flap. I'm going to turn this around. I'm going to fold and burnish a little one inch tab okay I'm gonna keep the score tape on the inside okay so I'm gonna put glue on this outside on the piece that was mitered or the side that was mitered that's what I'm trying to say okay we're gonna center this at the very top of this page okay so the page is six and a half, this is six, so you're going to have about a quarter of an inch on each side. Okay, once you've got that glued down, you can come in here, get the backing off of your score tape. I'm actually going to fold that down out of the way. I'm going to fold this partially out of the way, but I'm going to leave that on there so you can kind of at least see where I am. Okay, I'm going to put this right up against my score line and it's going to sit exactly edge to edge on this little tab. And then I'm just going to fold that over and burnish it down. And there is our acetate flap. This actually will sit inside like this. This will come down on the outside because what I had done on the page design for this is you've got your little acetate flap, you've got your pocket, and then you've got this little piece that'll just flip down. But we're, what I'm going to end up doing is taking either some of the stickers or some of the ephemera pieces um, and then matting them onto solid cardstock that I'm then going to cut with the um, scan and cut so I get that little shadow layer and that's what's going to go on here. And then you've got your little cut apart that you're seeing through the acetate there. 
And then of course, you know, you can flip this down, put a picture here, and then you've got space in this pocket to put more pictures, okay? So that's how you're gonna do your page assembly. So you can go ahead and assemble the pages. Oh, wait, we've got one more step, I'm sorry. Okay, so the last little step is you've got your other little one inch by five and a half inch piece, okay? This one I'm gonna go ahead and fold over and burnish. Then, once it's folded, I will go ahead and miter it just because it makes it easier. Okay, this, and this is where I'm saying you need to decide which is gonna be the front because if this is the front of my page, my hinge is gonna be over here, this is gonna be on this side, okay? So I am gonna go ahead and glue that to the piece that's gonna fold up all the way at the outside edge here, which apparently I can't even get straight because of course not, okay? So then that will fold up there. Once we get this in the book, you'll fold this up. You wanna mat right here at the top first, okay? So what I would suggest is getting your pages built, mat here. Actually, you could mat everything that you're gonna mat, honestly, it would probably be the easiest way to do that. And I think that's what I'm gonna end up doing. Um, so that when we go to put them in the book, actually, no, don't mat this part yet because you have to put it in the book, glue it to the hinge, and then you're gonna mat over the top part of the hinge that's gonna come across right here. That's what it was, okay. Okay, and if that's not making any sense, okay, so see here, I actually matted over too far <laughs> because of course I did, but I put the page on the hinge and then I did the matting for that little strip, the rest of it, so the front of the pocket, this little flap, you know, the little strips on your acetate, you know, if you wanna put this little piece on, you can. Same thing with your matting back here. I did not mat the insides just because I was trying to keep down on bulk because I truly, for once in my life, really do intend on putting pictures in these books. So I did not mat on the inside there just to keep it from being bulky. And of course, this is your belly band. The matting underneath the belly band does not go all the way through, again, just to save on paper. I was trying really hard to do these small albums with the mini collection only without having to add any extra sheets of paper. And I ended up having to add one extra, The I think it was the back side of one of the cut apart sheets that was just a really cute print. Um, and I did end up having to add that in. So it's up to you. Um, I supplemented with my colors and what I did is there is this fun little corner punch like photo slot punch from Dress My Craft that is in the store at Country Craft Creations. I know Bonnie had showed it on a live here a couple weeks ago, but that's what I ended up doing is I made, I did a photo mat that's four and a quarter by six and a quarter, no, four and three eighths by six and three eighths. Punched my corners, because then my four by six cut apart would just slip right up underneath there so that I can take this out if I want to and put a picture there or I can leave it and journal or whatever it is I wanna do. If that was right side up, that would help. But then that fits on top of that flap and mats with your little 1 8 inch border, okay? So that was my thinking in doing those, okay? So go ahead and get these matted everywhere except this little top strip that's gonna be up here underneath your acetate. You'll do that after we put these in the book, but you can go ahead and get your pieces cut and ready so that once we put it in the book, you can put that matting down and then you'll of course glue this up and this up, but we'll do that part together. So go ahead and get those done and then we will work on our cover and our shaker because our shaker on the front is going on to the cover very, very differently than I've done this in the past. So that's what we're gonna work on next. Okay, so let's do 
or at least prepare our flaps for the front and back inside covers. So you're going to need two pieces that are seven and a quarter by five and a half and two pieces that are four and three quarters by five and a half. So this is basically just you cut it to five and a half and then you cut the seven and a quarter and then you have your other flap. Okay. So we're going to start with the seven and a quarter at the top of our scoreboard and we're going to score this at half an inch. Okay. The other two, we're going to start with the, I'm sorry, is this all there? Yes, okay, with the five and a half at the top of the scoreboard and score that at half an inch. Okay, so these go in the book. So this is the seven and a half. Yeah, the seven, and this is. The smaller one so we just turned it sideways okay so you can go ahead and mat those if you want or you can wait until we get um, the cover and stuff done I'm gonna set those aside let me grab my chipboard and whatnot and I will be right back okay so apparently I thought I was recording when I did my cover pieces and I had bumped or put something on top of the mouse which then stopped the recording <laughs> if you've made albums with me before you know how to wrap your covers your covers are going to be six and three quarters by six and three quarters the cardstock to wrap them is going to be eight and three quarters by eight and three quarters okay so that's going to be those two you can go to any of my other tutorials and see exactly how to wrap these okay um, for the spine, the spine is two inches by six and three quarters. The cardstock is five inches by eight and three quarters because we have that inch and a half overhang on each side, which the way this is going to go together, part of one side is actually going to get trimmed off, but rather than make that more confusing, we'll do that when we get to that point. Okay. So I have folded my cardstock around, I've cut out my corners, I've mitered normally for the little pieces. For the wings, because this is going to wrap to the outside, what did I do there? I think I cut in there too deep, oh well, that's okay. Um, you don't want to get really aggressive mitering this because this is going to wrap to the outside, okay? So we're going to go ahead and just wrap our ends in. Is where I got the point I got to and then realized oh wait a minute it's not actually recording because I went to go pause it and was like wait what <laughs> so yeah I apologize um, I'll you know new software new computer it's just been all kinds of fun okay so I'm gonna run glue along the edge of that chipboard and then in the opening in between and take my bone folder, push up against the chipboard and over and down. That is the exact same process to wrap these, only the, the cover pieces you're doing it all the way around. The spine you're just gonna do on these two ends. This one is actually no one I have. So I'm going to flip it over, pretty side up, and I'm going to burnish. No, I'm not because we're not wrapping that way. Ignore that. Okay, we're going to set that aside. So for our shaker, and this is where this is going to be a little bit different than what you're used to. So I lost my pen. Again. Okay. So on the other version of this, you'll see that that shaker sits on top of the spine, okay? So that the width of the spine takes into account how thick the shaker is going to be so that when this is open, of course the pages are going to cut that and I had a boo-boo that is 
is causing issues. But um, this is going to lay mostly flat, okay? You're not gonna have the cover, you know, kind of making this stand up like this because the shaker is sitting on top of the cover. In this case, the shaker is on, is basically like sunken to the inside, I guess. I don't know how else to explain it. So mine, as you can see, the original one, alligators just a little bit. That is because when I put my spine in here, it ended up being too close to the front. Despite the fact that I marked where it sat, I had put the pages in without putting anything on them. It slid just a little bit on me, which I didn't realize until it was too late. Um, so I do have a little bit of alligatoring, which is why I had you guys do your pages and like mat them and everything beforehand. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna put those pages on the spine outside of the book and then put the spine in the finished cover, okay? Not, I've done it on one or two other books, um, and typically when I'm doing it that way, there's a reason. I should have done it this way on my original one, but it's only a little bit, a little bit chunky. It'll be fine. It's, you know, it was one of these things because this was truly kind of my experiment to make sure the way I wanted to do this was gonna work, and I had extra paper, so if I totally screwed it up, I could start over. Um, but this, it popping open just a tiny bit, I'm not real worried about because when it's sitting like this, it's not bad. It's gonna slide into our box just fine. It'll be fine. The one thing I am going to do a little bit differently is the actual construction of the shaker itself. I use normal chipboard on this one. We're actually gonna use lightweight for the frame portion on this one, okay? So let's do that. So your lightweight chipboard, for this is going to be six and three quarters by six and three quarters. Let me grab this trimmer just because I prefer this one when I'm doing, um, because of, you know, that lovely little guide wire in there. It just makes everything easier. So, that's what I thought, okay. So we are going to Actually going to turn it this way and this like I said if you've got the Fiskars trimmer this is really easy to do well I think it's easy you're probably not going to agree with me but so I'm putting it to half an inch in here I'm setting my blade to start at half an inch here and I'm just going to go across until I'm half an inch from the other end I'm going to turn it and do the same thing again You can do it this way with the regular chipboard as well. And what I usually do, rather than trying to go all the way through the regular chipboard with this trimmer, even though I have my, you know, mostly dull chipboard blade in here, don't try to cut chipboard with one of these trimmers and then cut paper because it destroys your blade. So I always have one blade that I just have Sharpie on so I know it's an old blade. That's okay to cut chipboard because ultimately you're going to cover it. It's, you know, if your edges are a little frayed looking, it's fine. You don't want your paper looking like that though. So, um, I just have it marked. And what I'll do is rather than try to cut all the way through on heavy, like normal chipboard with this, and really even with the lightweight, I'll just get it kind of notched like it gives you your your base and then because I now have those little grooves I can take my craft knife I can put it in that groove and just pull down and it's gonna go through whatever the blade on the trimmer did not get you're able to keep it exactly where you want it because you've got that groove that you made with the trimmer and then you'll end up with a, an almost perfect frame every single time. So, there we go. I missed a tiny bit on that corner. Okay, 
So we have this. I am going to take 3 8 inch score tape and I'm going to go all the way around the outside. if you didn't want to do your shaker as thick as this is going to be you absolutely don't have to the reason the shaker on this one is thicker is because the elements that I put inside are layered so like these little leaves back here are on the first layer like before the foam tape the little boat here is in the second layer so between the first and second layer of foam tape this one is between the second layer and the third layer of foam tape just so, or I'm sorry the the frame and the top layer of the foam tape just to give it some dimension so it's not just totally flat in there okay so that's why we're doing it that way so we're gonna start with a piece of cardstock that is nine and three quarters by nine and three quarters we may need to adjust this a tiny bit, but we'll see. For now, we're gonna do a one inch spacer at the top with our half inch mini spacer and our one and a half inch spacer on the side, okay? Because we need an inch and a half around the outside of this frame. So I'm going to set this down I'm using the spacers. Okay. All right. So first thing we're going to do is I'm going to take my ruler and my craft knife, and I'm going to come corner to corner. And you can eyeball this, you don't have to do it with the ruler. I just find it to be a little bit easier to do it that way. But it's entirely up to you. Okay. Then, it keeps like sticking to my thing. All right, so then I'm gonna go about three eighths of an inch. And again, you can rough cut this, it doesn't matter. I'm going to cut. That's going to get rid of my first little triangle there. I'm going to do that all the way around. And because this is getting wrapped and you're not going to see it, it doesn't have to be perfect. blade too for all I know. I don't know when I changed this one last. Sometimes they last forever and then I do the next time I change it I end up doing a bunch of just weird things with it and it doesn't last at all. But it's still the absolute favorite craft knife I think I've ever used. This is the Cricut True Control blade and honestly I love it. So okay. So what we are going to do is I'm going to take quarter inch score tape, I find my end, and I'm going to go around on the edge inside on those little tabs we just made, okay? And 
pull. Before I pull backing off, I am going to burnish that down a little bit more. Okay, pull backing off a one. I'm going to kind of fold it just with my hands, and then I'm going to come in with the bone folder, push up against the side there, and then over and down. Okay, I'll do this all the way around. Once this is all assembled and matted, honestly, I don't know that anybody will notice but you. <laughs> That's the nice thing about making this kind of stuff is, like, you know, I might notice things I've screwed up, but other people won't. Okay, so we've got our inside. Now, foam tape. We're going to go around this very outside edge. Okay, you want the foam tape right up to that edge. Okay. And this is the normal thickness foam tape, not that like super, super thin stuff. And we are going to do three layers. Okay. So. The cardstock we are going to wrap up and around the edge of the foam tape. We want it out to the edge so that the cardstock sits against the outside edge here when we go to wrap it up and over. On the inside, you should have about an eighth of an inch. So your frame is half an inch deep. The edges of your frames are half an inch. Okay. The foam tape is three eighths of an inch. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pull the backing off of all of these. I'm going to start back down here on this bottom, and again, all the way to the outside edge. Try to line this up like right on top. Try to make sure it doesn't like kind of tend to push out because that is actually something I run into quite a bit. Um, when building shakers, it's it's kind of inevitable, but if you're lining up corner to corner, you shouldn't have an issue. Okay, so I'm gonna get it right up against there, line it up on the outside corner there, and then it should go down right where you want it. see I'm not trying to like put it here and then press it down all the way across I'm literally lining up end and end and then it will go straight across where I want it to okay and 
as I do this, you'll see I'm also turning so that when I do the next piece, I'm going across the seams from the prior round. That's just so that it seals everything off nice and tight. You don't have to worry, which the way we're wrapping this, you're really not gonna have to worry about your shaker fill leaking out. But it just means that you don't have to worry that, you know, you've got seams that are then gonna try to push outward. This just kind of squares it all up and solidifies everything. One. All right, there we go. We've got our frame. And actually, before I get those off and get myself all screwed up, we need our matting for this because this, of course, is going to sit on top of here. This will be done, then we can fill out our shaker piece and then assemble our cover. Okay? So it's gonna be kind of nice because this will already be down. We can build all our little layers in here and then we'll put the acetate down and then we'll finish building our cover, okay? So you do need to mat this before we do that. And what I had planned on using for the most part, no, I can't find them. So what I did on the Adventureland album is I used the Simple Stories page pieces, okay? So that's where that, the little hippo, this, the little vine, and some of the leaves and flowers came from. I think I pulled a couple of flowers out of the bits and pieces, excuse me, but the most part, this is where they came, you know, the page pieces is where they came from. The problem I'm going to have using this is I wanted this on the front, but it's wider than my cover is going to be, okay? So if this is all wrapped around, I'll just pretend for a second here, it's going to hang off, which the way this is going in the box isn't going to work. So I could go ahead and do this and just kind of trim little hang off parts off, which I think is probably ultimately what I'm going to end up doing. Um, in fact, yeah, I'm just going to do that. Ignore that. Okay, so we need to mat the inside of this. So I'm going to grab, okay, so I have not used either one of these prints. And I also have over here somewhere these sheets from the 6x8 pad. So I don't remember if these end up being line up. Oh, it does. So I just need to look at. Okay, so we're going to lay this here and just pretend that this is the one we're putting in here, even though I don't think it is. I think I'm going to use. Cups. I don't know what I'm using. I don't know. I haven't gotten this far in the plant yet. Okay, so this is going to sit down on here. Okay, so we're just going to pretend. And then we have the balloons. We have this little magical or magic banner that I will put about halfway in. And then we're going to have our castle that is gonna go all the way at the front. Actually, no, the castle will go all the way at the back. So no, I don't want the fantasy paper. It's just gonna get lost. Definitely not that one. Okay, so let's look at the teacup one. No, too much. Okay, so that means I think I'm gonna use this one. Okay, this is the one I'm gonna use. So I am gonna cut, as I find my trimmer, inches by 
six inches. Okay. I would start out so organized and then I get flustered over something and it all goes down the drain. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm just going to center this because ultimately the edges of it are going to be covered up. Okay. So once I've done that, then I can go ahead and pull the backing off of my foam tape. And then lay my cover piece, which really I could have matted this side of my cover piece and put it down and then had the nice smooth one to the inside, but the way the covers going together, it's not really going to matter. Okay. All right. So then now I can go along my little score lines here. Same way on each one. And then that doesn't look right. What did I just do? No. Actually, I don't know what I just did. I might have just totally screwed that up. Because this is going to come up and over. And this one's going to come up and over. And then this one's going to come up. Okay, no, I'm actually okay. All right, I'm just going to cut a little tab right there on that piece. Just to tuck in. And I think I probably still did screw this up, but I think I can... Not necessarily hide it, but fix it where you're not really going to notice. So, this is going to come up along the side and then over and down. Okay? You're just going to want to make sure, if you need to miter this at all, that you do so. And then I am actually going to glue all the way around. Okay. I'm going to come up my side and then over and down. tabs. We can see if anything needs trimmed. And this folds up and over. Yeah, I did get those a little bit screwed up. I'm not sure what I did wrong. But that's okay. We will make it work. This one does need mitered. Okay. All right. So, what I did, I'm trying to think how this actually needs to go up and over. I think it's because I scored this, is what's screwing me up because where we are not doing it the way I thought I was doing it, it really didn't need to be scored. So I will, of course, edit that part out. So mine's going to look a little funky, but what you should be able to do is fold this up and over like so. Use your project to help you bend it around and you're going to just 
burnish, okay? That's gonna give you your line where you need to trim to make your little tab that you're gonna tuck in to seal off that corner, okay? Like so. So mine's gonna be a little bit funky and that's just because of the change in plans as to how I was doing this. That was very much not expected because I had not thought that this was going to be that hard, but I'm going to have to try my other little shaker idea on something else because it's not going to work on this one, and that's okay. All right, so again, I am going to do glue all over this entire tab. I'm going to use my bone folder, push up, and I'm going to push down on the table. And again, at least get it started, but then you can lay it back down and burnish it. Like I said, mine's a little weird just because I had scored it anticipating doing something else that is not going to work. So see, that corner is perfect. This one I need to lay out just a tiny bit. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm actually going to put a little bit of glue on my tab. The good tab and the bad tab. Kind of just tuck those in and then I'll do my glue over the rest of it. Okay. This is going to be a fun one to edit and figure out what all I did wrong <laughs> so I can fix it when I edit. There we go. All right, so that corner is perfect. This corner, not quite so much, but it's okay because we're going to mat and it's not going to be like really noticeable. So it'll be fine. All right, so I'm just going to lighten that tab just a tiny, tiny bit. Maybe I should get my smaller scissors for this. All right, so let's go ahead again. I'm going to do a little bit of glue on that tab just to kind of get it tucked in there in the wrong tab as well. And then over this entire piece. Okay, and then down, and we'll go up and over again. And there we go. Okay, so our base, our shaker cover piece is finished. Okay, I am gonna move this stuff out of the way for right now. grab the rest of my cover pieces. So we're going to do the one that makes sense first. Okay. You want at least an eighth of an inch in between. Okay. Fortunately, if you take your two one inch spacers and put them together, One of your spacers. I'm so, I am so losing my mind, I'm telling you. That whole shaker thing just has me all flustered. Okay. And use that to get your spacing. However, to make sure that my cover piece goes where I want it to go and that I don't accidentally slide it out of alignment because I'm very good at doing that, I'm going to go ahead and use both glue and a little bit of score tape okay so I'm gonna hold my spacer standing up in there I'm gonna stand this up so where's my scoreboard I did want that still let your scoreboard help you okay standing up here 
spacer standing up in the main in this to maintain your spacing. And then I can just line this up at the bottom of the scoreboard. And there we go. And we've got our good spacing in here, exactly the way we want it. And we've wrapped our cover to the outside. Now, this one, obviously this tab is wider, okay? How this one goes on is you're gonna stand this on top of your spine. You're gonna pull this on around, but before we do that, we need to trim this down, okay? So I am going to trim this, so this is an inch and a half. I am gonna trim this down The way you're going to be best able to tell, line it up like this, pull it out to the edge and see where that intersects, okay? So I'm going about right there, okay? So mine ended up being not quite an inch, but really close to it. Actually, no, like, I don't know, what is that? 13 sixteenths? I don't know. All right, so I'm going to trim that off. What I am going to do is I am going to take red line tape because it is far stronger than score tape and we are going to go over there's my end I think yeah there it is this is going to go along this outside edge This is quarter inch wide. Yes, I think. Mm, not quite quarter inch. Um, you don't want to go all the way into the middle. You want to go again about an eighth of an inch because once this is actually in and it lays back flat, you're going to have about an eighth of an inch. Okay. Burnish that down. And grab my scoreboard. I am going to lay this in here, pushed all the way into the corner so this is standing up. Okay? And I'm going to lay this here and I'm just going to double check that this is lining up where I want it to so that when I put it down, this is not hanging over into the front of my shaker. To make sure everything has been trimmed appropriately. And when you push this down in your scoreboard like this, you're gonna be able to see. Okay? In fact, let me grab, because this is really hard to show you on camera. However, I am going to take a picture and show you what I'm what it should look like okay well, something. okay so I'm pushing that down in there so this should sit right in there like so so if it's all the way goes right to the edge okay I don't have my other I have another camera that I was gonna set up so that I could switch and like record when I do weird things like this and I 
just have not had a chance to get figure out a good setup for it. So you're gonna get cell phone footage and I apologize. <laughs> okay, so standing up, standing up. I push all the way in and over. Burnish that down and there you go. So then your shaker sits on top of your cover. It all closes up just beautifully and it lays flat when you open it. So there we go. All right, so normally we would do a reinforcement piece that would go all the way across. In this case, it's going to go from the edge of the chipboard across over here. I tried, and this is where my, which is part of the problem with my other one, I tried to like go over and up the side of this. It did not work. It didn't want to close right after that. So I found it was easier to just go up to that edge of that chipboard and just leave it at that. So this is six and five eighths by four. The back is covered in tape. So I'm gonna pull my backing off. Line this up. So I'm right at that edge. I don't wanna go over right to that edge and down. Okay, then take the bone folder and we'll work it down into that crease. Okay, and there you go. There's your cover. So the next thing we're going to do is we've got our flaps that go on the front and back inside. Okay, so I'm going to miter these. ones you're going to center on the bottom. So I'm going to fold, burnish my spray. Now we're going to go ahead and glue these in. And just center them up. lay that on there because it should be the same height as the album and just make sure it doesn't hang over and need just a little bit trimmed off the end. It should be fine. But it's some, one of those things you always do want to check. Okay. And on the other side. this point, you're going to want to mat and decorate these two pieces and mat your center spine, okay? Then we will come back and we'll do our shaker and then we'll put our, do our hinge pages and put those in, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and get that all matted and decorated and then we'll be back. Okay, so I've got my elements in here for my shaker. 
and I've just got a roll of score tape sitting in here so this will sit up a little more flat. Um, popped them up to a couple of different dimensions. I did end up just trimming the end off of where it says fantasy there. So this will go across on the top of the acetate after the acetate is down and you've matted around the outside edge, okay? So I've got my six and a half by six and a half inch piece of acetate. And I'm sorry if you hear the lawnmower. Of course, the second I start recording again, that's when he decides to come to this side of the house. But that's okay. Not a big deal. It's only a little bit on this side that he has to do. Okay. So, let me get the tissue paper off of that. Now, before I forget what I'm about to just do, um, so this is a new uh, shaker mix. This is Buttons and Galore, Buttons Galore Mix-Ups. And this one is called Wish, Up, Wish Upon a Star. And I know she just got these in the store. Um, this one might be gone already. I'm not sure. You know what? I'm going to use the entire dang thing. But if it is, I promise you she'll be getting more. There are some really cute ones. Um, I'm not leave another one out here. No, hold on. Let me grab a couple of the other ones I have just to show you because they are so cute. I thought I had a couple more, but maybe not. Okay, so this one is called Shell Beach, and it's got the little shells and the purple, little iridescent. It is so cute with the purple and the like kind of teal, not teal, like, uh, I don't know, light blue, let's say that. This is one called Elf Made, and it's got like little uh, peppermints, and just little sparkly things and not sparkly things. They're really, really neat. Um, so look for those in the store. Okay, so got our shaker mix in there. I'm going to pick up my and I'm actually going to wipe it off just a little bit and I just do that with rubbing alcohol because it does help to just kind of clean up that acetate if you've got dust on it or something and then I'm just going to lay this on here something on the inside that's not supposed to be there. No. Okay. So I'm going to branch that down and then wipe off my front with the alcohol as well. Like I said, plain old rubbing alcohol. Um, and there's our shaker. Let's take that out though. <laughs> there's our shaker. So what I did is I used the castle and the little like fairy dust pieces and the book from the page pieces and then I just put um, some of the words from the sticker sheet um, on there. So it says, once upon a time, I wish the fairest of them all and happily ever after. This I'm going to go ahead and get score tape on the back of. And since the big stuff's sitting here, I'm going to use it. as big for these corners. This is going to go all, oh no, I need to, I'm on a roll. 
telling you. I do need to mat around the edge of that before I put these on here, so I'm actually going to stick my backing tape, backer paper back on there and set this aside because I do still need to mat around the edge of that. So I did mat on my spine. So in the six by eight paper pad, there is a sheet, one for fantasy, one for adventure, one for frontier, and one for space tomorrow. What does it say? I think it says tomorrow. Um, so that's what I'm putting on the spines of these four small books that go inside the front of the um, travel trunk. So you can easily just look at it and go, oh, this is the one I want to look at today. So, all right, so let's, got my inside cover pieces decorated. Let me grab my spine. So your, I'm sorry, not spine, hinge. Your hinge is gonna be six and a half by five and one eighth. So it's a five and one eighth at the top of the scoreboard. As I figure out where my scoring tool is, there it is. This is gonna have three, eight, three eighths of an inch gussets. So this scoring is gonna be a little bit weird, okay? You're gonna go half an inch. One inch. Okay, there's your first hinge. One and three eighths. One and seven eighths. Two and three eighths. Two and three quarters. Three and one quarter. Three and three quarters. Four and one eighth. Four and five eighths, okay? So your hinge is half an inch, your gusset is three eighths, okay? Little bit odd, I know, but this is what seemed to be the best option for how we were doing this. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my glue, get that ready to go. Flip this over so the bumpy side is facing me. And I'm gonna fold my first half inch and I'm gonna burnish starting from the center going out. I'm gonna burnish that down. And then I'm gonna glue. Okay. Get the glue down and then burnish. You may have a little bit seep out the end, that's fine. Just wipe it away. that a second. You're going to skip this one. You're going to go to your next two half inch pieces. Fold, starting in the middle, burnish out. Okay. Glue again. got your second hand so you're going to go back to your first one because it's had a minute to dry. You're going to fold it all the way over and again you're going to burnish from the middle out and then because this will have given this part a second or two to dry I actually will flip it over this way and start bending from this outside and then come back and fold it back over and burnish from the outside. This is going to keep it from getting crooked because <coughs> as much as you know as as th this is the hinge I use all the time but that is something that you do run into occasionally where it ends up just slightly off okay so then we're gonna skip again it's on here I don't even know what that is where it came from oh it came off of my bone folder <laughs> Okay then. All right, so we're gonna skip that. We're gonna go to the next two half inch sections. Fold them together and burnish. And then again, 
then with the glue. And you don't want to get like too crazy with the glue. I used to always use tape on my hinges, but it tends to make them really stiff. They definitely go together a little bit faster, but not enough to really make it worth it. Okay, so we're gonna burnish that down. We'll give it just a second to get good and dry, which art glitter does dry very quickly. So again, I'm gonna start on this outside, just kind of fold, and then I will flip it over and do it from this side. Again. Okay. All right. There's three. And our last one, we're going to fold over, burnish. I actually need to take just a sliver off of this because it's just a hair longer than it needs to be. Okay, so yeah, just a teensy teensy bit. So again, glue, 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 burnish. Just a minute. And then you can fold it over and burnish it down. Okay. In fact, I'm going to go even all the way around just because this way everything's going to bend nicely. And then it never hurts to just kind of fold your hinge back and forth and kind of burnish every which way because it's going to make your hinge that much easy to, easier to turn, okay? So this is going to be probably the tricky part, okay? So I have my pages. I have them in the order I want them to go. I'm going to start with my last page out of the way, fold that out of the way. We're going to lay this on here. It's going to go all the way to the bottom. And then I actually think my hinge is too tall. Maybe. Okay. I'm going to actually take just a tiny, tiny bit off this. I think my paper slipped just a tiny bit when I was cutting it. I'm going to do it with this because I know I can go through all of my layers without any issues. So again, I just took a teensy, teensy bit off the end. I literally only bought that trimmer so I could cut thumb core. <laughs> and I really kind of like it. I'm really surprised. Okay. So we're going to start in here at the end. I'm going to slide it out about an eighth of an inch. Okay. I'm going to put glue on one side of the hinge. I'm going to lay it in here. Just again, sliding it out about an eighth of an inch. So you don't want the side of your page flush up against the hinge, okay? So you can see there, there's the edge of my page, there's the edge of my hinge, okay? All right. If you have your matting cut for this piece, you can now put that down. And I thought I did, but apparently I don't. So let me, I did it for two of them. Apparently I didn't do it for this last one. So let me 
find the one I wanted for this, which was... So I am going to cut that to about an inch and a half. And I know I need one more, so I'm going to cut two of them. And then it needs to be six and three eighths. I drew a blank for just a second. I'm like, wait a minute, how big is this thing again? Hold on, six and three eighths. There's one. There's the other. Okay. So now I'm gonna go go ahead and glue this one in here. And I'm gonna do the stripe. Teacups, but that's okay. We're going to use the stripe. Okay, so this is going to go like so. Then we can put glue on our gusset and we can put glue a little bit more over down this side. And you want to run this just down this edge because you don't want to take up too much of your pocket. But having the little gusset on this side is going to actually give you a little more room to tuck things into that pocket. Okay? So there's one. I'm going to leave those pieces folded out. I'm going to go to my next page. Did I not have... Oh, I guess I didn't. Okay, so this one I am going to use the teacup side up. So I've got that ready to go. So again, I'm going to flip this out. I'm going to flip this out and this out. Okay? I'm going to line it up. Again, we're going all the way to the bottom, but we're going to stay about an eighth of an inch out. Okay? So I'm going to fold that down. Put glue on my hinge. Stand it up. That's just to ensure I'm going all the way to the bottom. So the only thing I didn't already have matted other than this strip is the strips on the sides of the belly band just because I'm going to use scraps to do that essentially um, or I'm not doing full pieces that are sliding underneath that unless you want to do it that way you can it just makes it a little bit more bulky when you don't necessarily need it to be at this point. Okay so again we're going to start everything open. Go in, all the way down, and then we're going to pull it back out about where we think we want it. I'm actually going to flip it down this way and do it from this side. Try to be somewhat consistent. Okay that. Go back this way and again with the mat.
So, last one. Get that piece out, which really I probably need to cut another one because that one is kind of short. That was kind of like down to scraps at that point. You know what? It'll be fine. We're gonna go with it. Okay. So, one more time. This one shouldn't be too terrible because this one we can at least flip it all the way over, lay it flat, and then wiggle it out about an eighth of an inch. Okay. Again, do our matting. There we go. And then close it up. here, close all of these up, the reason I left them open was just because we don't need to worry about getting glue accidentally on our acetate, okay, so there's our page set, okay, what we want to do is, this needs to stand up, this will need to go in here centered from the point where this all stands up. So what I'm going to do, let me actually turn this on its end so you can see, okay? So we need this centered between where this ends and where this one folds over, okay? So, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take the tip off of my glue. Scoreboard. Maybe. <laughs> and I'm going to get this sitting here ready so I can like put it in here when I'm ready to go. Make sure you're right side up. I totally would do it the other way and not realize it until it's too late. That I would not put, put it past me at all to do that. Okay. I am going to be somewhat generous with the glue simply because this will give us a minute to kind of wiggle this around and get it exactly where we want it. So you need to center top to bottom. center front to back, not really center, no, not center front to back. Okay, we're good there, we're good there. So at this point I'm just going to hold it and give it a minute to dry. on my glue while I'm holding this. Get my pen. Okay. I'll go ahead and close this up and just let it sit for a few minutes to make sure it's good and dry. I'll go ahead and cut my matting for the edge of that matting for the back, and I actually did mat on this edge around the shaker, but it's totally optional. Um, and then once I've got that matting done, I'll go ahead and put this on here, and then I'm going to add these two little pieces that say make a wish and make it good right above where it says fantasy. 
Um, but there you go. That will be your project. Totally done, ready to go into the box with the other one, and I will get started on Frontierland next. Um, thank you for watching. As always, if you end up making one of my projects, please share it with me on my page, Scrapping Under the Influence. Um, you can also share it on Instagram and tag me at Scrapping Under the Influence. And we have a craft group that is going to have a new name very shortly. Right now, it is called I Scrapped Under the Influence, a craft group for all crafters. Share it there, share other things you've made, share things you've designed yourself, cards, it doesn't matter. Any kind of craft project, share it over there. I'm sure somebody would love to see it. Um, as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.